On October 13, 1951, the National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing announced they were no longer just racing stock cars. They were creating a new IndyCar series, NASCAR's shortly-lived Speedway division. While they're known informally as Indy cars today, back in the 40s and 50s, these open-wheel cars were commonly called Speedway cars. Stock cars raced at Daytona Beach, while Speedway cars raced at Indianapolis. But NASCAR was growing, looking to expand, and Bill France was a fan of open-wheel racing. But he saw that Indy car racing was becoming more expensive to do. To provide a cheaper alternative, NASCAR created their Speedway division, which would make its debut in 1952. It was the fifth different series that NASCAR promoted. At the time, the AAA was America's leading sanctioning body for auto racing. Every year, they sanctioned the Indianapolis 500 and the IndyCar Championship. At the same time, NASCAR and AAA were bitter rivals. Maybe Bill France created the Speedway division despite AAA, or maybe he just wanted a piece of the IndyCar market and do it cheaper than AAA. To keep his costs down, the Speedway division was a mix of former Indy 500 cars, dirt sprint cars, and custom-built vehicles. Rules required these cars use a stock American passenger car motor. That meant the series was filled with Indy cars using unconventional Ford, Hudson, Studebaker, DeSoto, and even GMC truck engines. Rules stated the minimum wheelbase had to be 96.5 inches. At the time, people believed this wheelbase would be good for larger tracks, but maybe not competitive on the short tracks. In February 1952, NASCAR announced a 14-race schedule for their open-wheel cars. Ironically, the first event for the Speedway division wasn't to be held on a Speedway at all. It was a time trial session at Daytona Beach, held two days before the Grand National race. The cars would stay on the sand, drive one mile up the beach, and the fastest time would win the event. Buck Baker beat Fireball Roberts to claim the first Speedway competition. While he eventually won two championships in 46 cup races, at this point, Baker had never won a cup race. In fact, the car he was driving was more famous than he was. It was built specifically for the 1939 Indy 500. It was co-owned by the 38 winner Floyd Roberts. That year, the car finished ninth, driven by Frank Wern. The owner, Roberts, died in the race. One year later, it finished third, driven by Mari Rose. In 1941, the car won the Indy 500, co-driven by Floyd Davis and Mari Rose. After World War II, it was driven by Joey Chitwood in 1946 to a fifth-place finish. It was driven again two more times in 1949 and 1950. Now, in 1952, this car was proving itself as the fastest in NASCAR's new series. The first actual race for the Speedway division was at Darlington on May 10th, just a few hours before the Cup race. As part of the war between NASCAR and the AAA, drivers from both series were forbidden from racing for their rival sanctioning body. Because of the AAA ban, there weren't any IndyCar drivers in the field. Most of the drivers were midget racers from the Northeast and NASCAR sportsman drivers. The race featured a notable technological advancement by one of the teams. Tony Bonadeus had one of the first radios installed in an open cockpit car that allowed him to talk with his pit crew during the race. Rather comically, his car owner took a military walkie-talkie and tied it to the side of Tony's head. He would have to reach up and press the button if he wanted to talk, even if he was driving at full speed. After leading 56 laps, the car fell out around halfway with a blown head gasket. Backing up his win at Daytona, Buck Baker took the victory at Darlington. Over the next two months, the Speedway division raced at Martinsville, Rochester, New York, Charlotte Speedway, Lakewood, Georgia, Heidelberg, Pennsylvania, and the famed Langhorn Circle. As part of the war between the series, the AAA held their first IndyCar race in North Carolina since 1926. They held a race on the 4th of July at the Raleigh Speedway. For revenge, NASCAR quickly scheduled a high-paying sportsman race at Darlington on the same day. While 25,000 spectators watched the Indy cars at Raleigh, and only 12,000 were at Darlington, NASCAR released a statement saying the slow pace of the Indy cars failed to live up to the expectations. But by July, it became apparent the Speedway division had several problems. Interest in the series was small. Only 14 cars started the race in Rochester. At the same time, there was a nationwide steelworkers strike ongoing, and thus it was very difficult for car builders to find steel to build their cars. And on top of all of that, the summer of 1952 was historically one of the hottest in the last 100 years, which kept crowds small. 
In late July, NASCAR announced that all future races would be postponed because of these reasons. With two wins, Buck Baker was declared the champion of the shortened season. Upon the cancellation, the AAA reveled in releasing a statement which called the Speedway division junk cars and a fad that was dying out. In newspapers from January 1953, it was reported that the Speedway division was, quote, conducted on an experimental basis in 1952. During Speed Week in February, they planned to make a schedule for 53 at the annual track operators meeting. Apparently, there was very little interest in the series moving forward. The second season of the Speedway Division still began once again at Daytona, and like the year before, Buck Baker won again. The next race wasn't held until June at the Greensboro Fairgrounds. Four races were held in June before the series quietly disappeared. NASCAR has never tried to hold IndyCar races since the Speedway Division. The arch-rival AAA left auto racing in 1955 after the Le Mans tragedy. Today, the AAA commonly sponsors NASCAR races and cars. The only major remnant of the Speedway division is the champion's car itself. Buck Baker's winning car was restored in its original condition in the 1941 Indy 500 and currently sits in the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Museum. When it was restored in the late 1970s, sand was found inside, a lasting memory of its time racing on the beaches of Daytona.